reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles too had accepted the word of God. So, when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of an uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa, when in a trance I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently to it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter and eat it. But I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane and unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, a voice from heaven answered, What God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times, and then everything was drawn up again into the sky. Just then, three men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Joppa, and summon Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak words to you by which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift He gave to us, when we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God has then granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles too. Responsorial Psalm A thirst is my soul for the living God. As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. Then will I go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then I will give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I tell you for certain that only thieves and robbers climb over the fence instead of going in through the gate to the sheep pen. But the gatekeeper opens the gate for the shepherd, and he goes in through it. The sheep know their shepherd's voice. He calls each of them by name and leads them out. 
When he has led out all of his sheep, he walks in front of them and they follow, because they know his voice. The sheep will not follow strangers. They don't recognize a stranger's voice, and they run away. Jesus told the people this story, but they did not understand what he was talking about. Jesus said, I tell you for certain that I am the gate for the sheep. Everyone who came before me was a thief or a robber, and the sheep did not listen to any of them. I am the gate. All who come in through me will be saved. Through me they will come and go and find pasture. A thief comes only to rob, kill, and destroy. I came so that everyone would have life and have it in its fullest. When you are with people whom you consider your subordinate, when it comes to status in the society, what is your attitude towards them? When you find yourselves in the midst of other races, what is your attitude towards the race which you think is inferior or superior to yours? In your life abroad, as an OFW, just in case you are, have you experienced being discriminated against, especially by the person to whom you work with? Filipinos usually struggle from this discrimination, although I would emphasize that not all are racist. In my own experience, working in the midst of people not belonging to my own race, I notice that when they ask me from where I come from, and when I say I am a Filipina, I could see a kind of reaction which seems to me a bit intimidating. Many would feel, many would feel superior, especially when they know where we come from, especially if we come from the third world countries. Even if they won't express it openly with their words, but their way of interacting with us will say it all. It does not matter whether they are church worker or not. In any way, racial discrimination is very well felt, especially in situations where different people from different nations are involved. It is very unfortunate if we feel it among the church workers. In the first reading, Peter, a person closer to Jesus, who received the first-hand teaching from Jesus to love everyone without distinction, had discrimination against the non-Jews. He did not want to go to the house of Cornelius for fear of being defiled, but because the Holy Spirit urged him to go, he went. No Jew would think of going into a Gentile's home for fear of being defiled by mingling with them. He changed his mind when God gave him the vision with a message that what God has made clean he is not supposed to call profane. The same message Jesus was telling the apostles in the gospel, a man is not defiled by what enters his mouth, but by what comes out of it. The Lord Jesus had clearly told the apostles to go to the whole world to preach the gospel to every creature, not only to the Jews, because 
God's love is extended to all. Who are we to respect only those whom we think are superior to us and be indifferent to those whom we think inferior to us? In today's Gospel, Jesus continues to talk about the Good Shepherd. He takes care of every one of us without distinction. He loves all his sheep with the same love. Each is important to him, so he gave each one his name. He is the shepherd who enters through the gate to take care of the sheep and not to oppress them. In fact, the sheep recognize his authority and follow him. He takes them out of darkness because this was the mission entrusted to him by the Father. When he brings the flock to pasture them, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. This is a very consoling image of Jesus. He protects us. He carried us in his arms every time we find ourselves unable to go on in our life's journey. When that time comes, he carries us in his arms and continue the journey for us. While we are in his arms, we feel the warmth of his love and his care, which will energize us and be ready to take the journey again. Maybe we can ask ourselves, if Jesus is a good shepherd, are we ready to challenge ourselves to be good shepherds too, to those who are entrusted to us, to our children, to our parents, and to those people who are entrusted to us in our work. When we find them in difficulty in life for many reasons, what is our attitude? Do we try to understand them and their situation and fill them with our consoling words so that they will be able to regain their strength and start all over again? When, in our work, the old person who is entrusted to us, who is overcome by his sickness and tends to become harsh in words and actions, how do we respond to him or her? These situations are indeed difficult to handle. That is why, in today's Gospel, Jesus is helping us to bear the situation. Let us thank Him for this as we continue to ask Him to give us the strength to go on in our journey despite of the many falls. From the Connect Us Fund.org Father, I thank you for being the door of your sheep. Lord, I adore you because you hear me, and through you I am saved. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Lord, you have come so that I may have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you for being the Good Shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. You are not a hireling who sees his sheep as a job, but you are a Good Shepherd who sees his sheep as his children. 
I thank you, Lord, because you know your sheep and are known by your own. Amen. Thank you.